All right, so we come to the final bit of quadratics and completing the square. And the, you know, if you watch the introduction bit to this, a lot of this will just make sense. But it'll be nice to give you an introduction, give you a feel why you have to do it, uh, why you have to complete the square, which is just another rewrite, by the way. It's just another form of rewriting the quadratic. Then I showed you how to solve the quadratic, and now I thought I'll run you through more questions, um, just to kind of lock it in place. So you know, you might get a question like this: solve x squared minus 6x minus 3 equals 0. So you know, let's just kind of like again, let's make sure you understand. You're just trying to find the x here, which if you square, take away 6, lots of it, take away 3, it equals 0. Now obviously, like look, um, now the deal with this is, like this one, you can't factorize it. That's the problem with factorizing. You can't factorize for all of them, because think about this. You know when you it factorizes, when you factorize stuff like that here, yeah, you get to like 0. Obviously, that's going to give you x equals minus 5, x equals 7. But here's the thing, like, it only, you can only really factorize for numbers which give you nice whole numbers or like little fractions, you know, like 1 over 7, 2 over 7. What if x is something like, I don't know, 2.71634, da, da, da. So you can't factorize. So the problem with factorizing is you can't do it for all of them. The beauty about quadratic uh, formula is you can. But, um, the other good thing about, so factorizing has a down point in the sense that it does, you can't always do it. Quadratic formula has a positive that you always can. In a way, completing the square is the same, you can actually always do it. So, here's the problem we have. We've got that x squared minus 6x minus 3. Remember, we always kind of, whenever we're doing this, we've got our aim of trying to get the x equals something, you know, x by itself. And it's too hard when you've got this x squared business. So, similar to what we do on factorizing, we rewrite that in a different way. Okay? And we do that by rewriting it in the complete the square form. Now, I'll actually go over this one again. So, how do you do that? You start off with x minus, remember oh, it's the same sign as that, and half of whatever number's here, which is 3. So, put that squared. Now, if you want to do this really quickly, uh, you can just assume that's going to give you the first two terms correct. Um, and then just do minus 9, which is what will come out as a number at the end, because it's minus 3 times minus 3, which is plus 9. So you take away 9, to cancel that. And then you take away, so that will get you to the point where it's 0. So it's 0 at this stage. Yeah. So if we just have it at this stage, your little number on the end is going to be plus 9. Yeah. Just that, once you kind of put the bracket in. So then you take away 9, so now you're at 0, and then finally you take away 3, minus 3, so you take away 3 again to get to that negative 3. So then obviously you just have to clean it up, and you got x squared minus 12. So okay, that's completing the square. Um, but I'll just kind of run you through a little bit longer and explain why again, because I know all about the explanations. So anyway, you do that, this will give you x squared minus 6x plus 9. Does that make sense? Uh, if you multiply that out, double bracket thingy. So, the reason you have to put a minus 12 here is because you've got plus 9, but you're trying to rewrite this. So that doesn't rewrite this just yet, because that gives you a plus 9. These two match, but you've got plus 9, so you need to take away a further 12. Alright? So, that's why it is. So, that's why it's a minus 12. Now, this is incredibly useful. But, and again, if that's too quick an explanation, go over to completing the square video. So now this, so remember, all that's happened here is you've just rewritten that bit. You haven't changed anything, you haven't done anything to any, either side. You've just rewritten it. Now that gives you, that's m way more useful. Because you are now at the position of this. Now, you're just trying to get that x by itself. So, first thing you do is get rid of that 12 by adding 12 to each side. Yeah, so, now you're at x minus 3 squared equals 12. So, now you have to square root each side. Let me just kind of show you what I mean. So, you're now at this stage once you've done that. So, because that's being squared, you now have to square root this side, which means you're forced to square root that side. So, squaring this side will just give you x minus 3. This side, 
Remember, you have to do the square root of 12, but that will only give you the positive number. You have to do the plus or minus yourself. All right? And you can uh, stick the number, you can, if you really want to check, look, do the square root of 12 in your calculator. It will give you some weird number. Uh, we can do this. If you, it might be good to show you actually at this stage. Yeah, so, you know, if I put this in the calculator, you know, this is like something like 3.4641. One oh so on. You know that times itself gives it gives twelve. But of course, if that times itself is twelve, then obviously the minus of that number times the minus of that number is also twelve. Yeah. So, that's why you have to put the plus or minus. There's actually two, uh, two answers to a square root. And finally, you add 3. And remember, you can obviously put the add 3 here. But I don't recommend so. Because, like, just put it in front. It's just the way of writing it. There's nothing wrong with writing it like that, by the way. It's just that some people might confuse, oh, do you mean minus this as well, or something like that. But if you put it clearly up on the front, no issues, right? No issues whatsoever. And that's it. You've got, now you've got your two answers. x equals 3 plus square root of 12, and x equals 3 minus 12. And you can stick that into your calculator if this is a calculator question. Now, this question actually initially asked you, asked to write this, to solve this in the form of p plus or minus um, root 12. Okay, so here you go. That p, well, it's actually this form here, yeah? That p is actually um, 3. Okay, and that, q, well, yeah, and that plus 12 obviously you've matched. So there you go. And we'll actually learn later how to break square roots down further. Because here's the deal, you can actually write this uh, in a different way. But don't worry about that just yet. But hopefully the whole thing makes sense. Why we complete the square, how it helps us solve the quadratic, etc, etc. So we go. Another one. There you go. So here's one. It goes, two part question it goes, find, it says, find A and B such that x squared minus 6x minus, so plus 6x, is that? Yeah, plus 6x equals x plus A squared plus B. Now, do you see, they don't actually say um, complete the square on this. The questions hardly ever say that. What they will do is they kind of just say, oh, rewrite that as that, and that is completing the square. So you've got to be comfy knowing that. And then, you know, that word, whenever you see hence, that means you've got to use that. Hence, solve x squared plus 6x minus 11 equals 0. Okay? So... All we have to do first is put that into the complete square form. So remember, it starts off with x plus, because that's a sign there, half of whatever you see there, which is a 3. Now, you know, I'll show you. You can do it whichever way you want. It goes plus 9. You need a minus 11. So if you see, to go from plus 9 to minus 11, you need to minus 20. So that should be the final answer there, minus 20. But if you want to really do it, kind of, you know, because you don't want to think, here's what you do. You know, at this stage, you have a plus 9, this little number. So the next thing you do is you take away 9, get rid of that number. Now you're at 0. Then you want a minus 11, so you minus 11. Now you're at minus 11. And then that's it. So that's what you've got, x plus 3 squared minus 9 minus 11. Obviously, join that up. Gives you minus 20. So there you go. The, finding the a, b such that, can you see? a equals 3, and your b actually equals minus 20.
So, okay, hence solve. Well, we know what this is saying, right? So, we're going to start off by rewriting this bit because it's hard to solve that equation. Can't make x by itself. So, we rewrite that whole bit as the, you know, the answer which we had from the first part. And that's where that hence bit comes in. Equals zero. Uh, there you go, you know, then we're going to solve, we're going to add 20 to each side. Now, we're, now, do you see? Now we can make x a subject, so that's what the deal is. x plus 3 squared equals 20. Um, square root both sides. Remember, you get a plus and minus here, you don't need that bracket anymore. Square root plus minus 20. By the way, this says give answer. Answers two decimal places guys next thing move it to the other side so two answers here for grabs and you got minus three remember I even put that minus three in front we've got to keep that minus because I moved that across as minus plus root 20 and minus three take away root 20 Let's put that into our calculators. Minus 3 minus root 20. I don't know why I've done the second one first. Okay. So this one comes out to minus 7.47. Then I've also got to do minus 3 plus root 20. And this one just gives me 1.47. Alright, so that's how you solve a question. It's really, really similar to where like you start off with a situation which you can't solve, you can't find x like this, it's too difficult. And then you basically just rewrite the quadratic bit into something which is, you know, which you can use to solve. Just like how factorization, factorization obviously had the different trick. But this one, completing the square, allows you to use the scales again. You know, you mess around. Da, 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 da. That's it, that's it, that's it. That's it. Uh, that's the end of quadratics. So congrats, you made it through. And if you got this, if you understood this really well, you have got a lot of marks. You've got a lot of marks guaranteed on the uh, paper. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So, well done. All right. So, let's move on now.